right, people, welcome back to the card review. So today we are actually looking at a card that's been out for a while, but everybody's giving their opinion on it. You know, Meg Capital G gave his opinion on it, and Jerry gave his opinion on it. So I was like, you know what, fuck it, let me go ahead and give my opinion on it. So we've had this card for a long time, but I mean we as in the TCG and not we as in everybody, because of course this card has not got a reprint, nor is it confirmed for reprint any time soon. This is number 106, expensive, I mean giant, expensive hand. Giant hand. Expensive hand. This card's expensive. <laughs> you know. So we are going to go ahead and look at this card and I uh, will just go ahead and give my opinion about it because I'm not sure if I ever really sat down and did a card review about this card. So let's go ahead and do it. Why not? You know, they did it, so let's do it. So, uh, Giant Hand is an expensive card. It is a YCS prize card that has not been reprinted. And it's not even the current YCS prize card, it's like the YCS prize card from like 2013. So, yeah, and it's no reprint, no reprint inside. This card is like $700, 700 something dollars, 700 plus, I know that. Just to get your hand, oh my god, get your hands on one of these giant hands, because it's, it's expensive, you know? So you, you get it from winning YCS, you know? We have a handful of uh, YCS prize cards that haven't been reprinted. We have that Blood Mephis, he's, he's going for like 400 and... Ah, uh, what's that? What's the current one? That one Synchro Dragon. I think he's like a, I want to say he's like a level nine or ten Synchro monster that has like that Cipher effect. Where I think it's like how many cards your opponent has in their hand times one thousand. And then I think he's like when he's destroyed or removed from the field, you summon back the materials that made him. He's like, I want to say like four, four no, I want to say like five to six hundred dollars. You know, these, YC, these YCS price cards are super expensive. But like I said, when you look at, hey, where can I get one? Yeah, <laughs> you know. You gotta earn it. You gotta earn it. And, you know, when it comes to YCS prize cards, I've never been a big fan. But, you know, I get it. You know, you deserve something. Like, you really can't, you know, give you cash. So, let's, you know, let's give them a card that, you know, it's really rare. And, you know, only they will hack. But this has always backfired in the past. So, I'm fine with YCS prize cards as long as they're not too powerful, you know. If they're powerful to the point where you're getting a blatant super advantage from the fact of having this card because you won the YCS, then that would just be a snowball effect because you will use that card to win future YCSs if it's that good and then continue snowballing, you know. And I wouldn't say Giant Hand is one of those cards, you know, of the past, like, Gold Sark and Crush card, like those were like, yeah, damn, for the time, you know. Giant Hand, on the other hand, uh, it's just a decent card. I don't want to say good, it's just a decent card, but I guess I should go ahead and do the review of the card and then go ahead and make judgment. So, like I said, this is number 106 Giant Hand, though he's an Earth, Rock, XC, Effect Monster, a rank 4, 2000 attack, 2000 defense. He is generic to a level four monsters, and as you know, level four, rank, level four, rank fours are the toolbox. That is, that is literally the best and the most accessible uh, ranks. You know, you got some powerful, powerful things in your toolbox that you know you definitely don't want to take out. Uh, but if you had a giant hand, uh, should you run it? That is the question. So let's read this effect. So during either player's turn, when a monster effect is activated on your opponent's side and failed, except during the damage step, of course. You can attach two exterior materials from this card, then target one effect monster your opponent controls. While this card is placed upon the field, the effect monster's effects are negated, also it cannot change its battle position. And that is it. So, um, if you really think into it, what is this card really similar to? This card is pretty much similar to Fiendish Chain, of course. And I, when I first saw it, I always thought about that, I was like, mm, this card kind of like Fiendish Chain, you know? Uh, you know, I have something on the field holding your monster down. Your effect is negated, but uh, of course, with Phoenix Chain, your monster can't attack, which I would much rather prefer than your, bat your opponent's monster can't change battle position. So, you know, unless I get something super weak, which of course, uh, you know, there's no surprise factor with this card, unlike Phoenix Chain, then I don't know what you're doing with it. You know, I said, this card is already on the field. There's no, in comparison to this and Phoenix Chain, this card's already on the field. Your opponent already can see it. So, you know, why? Would your opponent blatantly just be like, "All right, summon this uh, the zero attack monster"? It has a great effect, you know. You know, let's say, you know, let's play Let's just go ahead and keep out, you know. And you can't turn into terror, you know. Why the hell would you go ahead and you know summon Ubel and 
attack mode. That's a bad example because if you, your opponent kills it, which are affecting me, you still get terror. That's a terrible example. I apologize. I, I don't know. I don't know. I really can't think of anything. Just for example, they, why would they summon something where, you know, dealing with the changing of the battle position matters when you go ahead and negate their effect when they clearly blatantly see this on the field, you know? When it comes to Phoenix Chain, that's a, that's a trap card. That, that jumps out the bushes and stabs you. It's like, you know, I have to bring my monster effect, Phoenix Chain. Woo, shit. I didn't see that coming. With this on their hands, the blatant giant hand is clearly blatantly sitting there on the field looking at you with its hands don't have eyes. The hands have eyes. This, this should be like a new horror movie. I'm getting off topic, hello? <laughs> you know, it's blatantly sitting there on the field. What are you going to do? Summon a monster and just be like, oh, activate my effect. Do you have to take some materials? Yeah. So, the whole change the battle position, I'm not blown away by that effect just because the stats are fine, but they're not like, oh, amazing, you know. Uh, simply, depending on how the monster effect goes, you know, you can simply just run this monster over and be free because, of course, this monster has to remain on the field. You know, just like Fiendish Chain, you know, if Fiendish Chain's not on the field, then the monster is free and it can use its effect, but, you know, as long as this monster is on the field, it will have a grip. Okay, stop with the hand puns. <laughs> on the opponent's monster. So, uh, how is this card overall? Is it worth the, the $700, $800? No, no. I feel like it's good, but it's not, and the good, I mean decent. I feel like it's in the bin of... Why is this price cards where it's a nice reward, but it's not necessary, you know? If, if, if this card got reprinted and it got, and everybody got access to it, it probably wouldn't even be, like, one of my top five. That, that see, you know, that's how far down it, you know? And with this being the prize card, we, I mean, we just got to be thankful that this is the prize card. Because, think, look what they could have made the prize what if, what if what if Castell was the prize card? Who? Ooh, ooh Exiton? Oh my god. Lavalva chain? Oh wow. And then and think and remember, it never reprinted. Never reprinted. Like think about those cards. Like that would be crazy. Freaking Rhapsody of Berserk. Abyss Dweller. Like there are some you know, no, those are some toolbox cards. And Think about if those are the prize cards, man. That'd be they'd be totally different, you know, totally different. Now we would have to talk about getting the reprint for them. But uh, this card, you know, I, I I can I can give or take on it, you know. Uh, the one thing I had to say about this card though is that it is actually a defensive rank four. There are not a lot of defensive rank fours if you really think about it. Most of the time, they are offensive. Uh, Respawn cards. A lot of them are of offensive respawn cards. You know, uh, you know, if your opponent has something, you, you especially some monster type of thing, you want to want it. That's an offensive respawn card. Castella, offensive respawn card. Uh, you know, Exiton, offensive respawn card. Even a Dweller, offensive respawn card, because you're responding to uh, to what your opponent does with the graveyard. It's not really more of a defensive defensive card. This is more of a defensive card. You know, this is the kind of card where you're like, huh. I got two level fours. I don't know what I want to exceed into because generally, rank fours don't do anything on your opponent's turn. Generally, but this card does, and I, I think that's what I like about it. That if you have two level fours and you really want to exceed into something, but you want to be more defensive and have more control during your opponent's turn, kind of like a trap card, then this is your card because, like I said, this is Phoenix Chain, and of course, Phoenix Chain. Just like this card can't be used during your opponent's turn for a more defensive action. You need to negate that monster effect. So, uh, overall, I just like the aspect of it that it's a defensive card. Because, you know, I play a lot of rank 4s in Yu-Gi-Oh! And sometimes I really do wish I had something defensive. There's been a handful of times where I look at my extra deck and I'm like, Castell, no. Hexaton, no. You know, 101, no. Law Train, no. You know, uh, pfft, yeah. Uh, King of Fellow, no, I don't need to search, you know, I, I, I want to get my opponent, you know, and especially if you're running decks that, you know, run little to no back row, it might be best to go ahead and have this, you know, to have your own kind of uh, toolbox access effect veil or fiendish chain kind of card, so, uh, is it a good card? I, I you know, I, I'd say it's decent, but I, I'll take it off the good, it's a good card. Is it worth eight hundred fucking dollars? Uh, no, it's not, and I will never buy this card for eight hundred dollars. You know, and, you know, I, if, even even remotely close to that. Like, if someone came up to me and said, "Hey, you want to buy this giant hand for four hundred dollars?" I'd be like, "No." Three? No. Two? No. I I'd, I'd probably budge at fifty. I because really, I, even when I, if someone came up to me and said. 
and I, and and not like reselling it, like like straight up, like if I purchase this card from him, I cannot resell it because I know you probably think, oh, well, you can buy it for cheap and then sell it for high, like you get profit. Like no, I mean straight up, like if I purchase this card, I'm not I'm not allowed to. I'm just physically speaking, you know, the universe will not allow me to sell it. Straight up, this is going to be my card forever. It's mine. How much would I throw down on this giant ham? I don't even think about it. Even a hundred dollars, I'm still like, eh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I, I, I budget fifty, and that, that you know, that's probably selling this card short, but that's just really how I feel about it. So uh, yeah, there we go. So tell me what you guys think about Giant Hand in the comment section below, and whether you guys really want to reprint it or not. Like I said, it's it's give or take for me. If it gets a reprint, then yay. If I have room in my extra deck, I'll put one. But if I don't. I'm not gonna fucking force myself to do it, you know. There's particular cards like, you know, Castell and Exiton and uh, generally the Volvo Chain and, you know, there, there's a handful of cards that I would put before. I would shit, you know, to tell you the truth, i probably even put Cowboy behind before it because Cowboy wins games, you know. This card may be helpful, but I seriously doubt it's gonna win me the game, you know. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd probably say Castell, Exiton, then depending on what deck it is, the Volvo Chain, um... Uh, see, that whole defensive thing is really getting me, so I'm not, I'm trying not, I'm finding it hard where to set it, you know, it would probably be not up there with those, but probably, like, in the Abyss Dweller Rhapsody group, like, Abyss Dweller Rhapsody Giant Hand, you know, do I have room in my extra deck? Yeah, I mean, go ahead and put them in there, you know, uh, so, but should you run them? Yeah, most definitely, you know, if you're running a rank 4 deck, and put them in your toolbox, because they'll, they'll be helpful, so. Anyway, I am done. I'm done speaking about this card. So, uh, not sure if there's going to be a reprint in the future. I really don't care. But it's just kind of odd that, you know, they they generally reprint cards after one. I mean, look, we have Gold Sark and we have, uh, uh, you know, Crush Card and Death, whatever his name, Death Logla or whatever. Then we just have a handful of cards, the his Park cards that got reprinted like this. Oh, not any time time. And there's cards before it and after it of Western Sprite cards that still want to be reprinted. So, you know, if this is the first one they jump to, then I just think they're being a little bit biased by the fact that, you know, this card is just more usable than the rest of them. But, hey. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I will see you guys on Thursday with another card to look at. Alright, people. Thanks for watching.